Chapter 6, section 2. We're just rolling right on along through chapter 6. Uh, radicals and rational exponents. Can anyone tell me what a radical is? A radical? Oh. The math version of a radical. Well, we can write it as an exponent, but we're talking about that today. But we've all seen that before, right? That's a square root. That's a radical. Cube root is also a radical. Fourth root, radical. Fifth root, sixth root, seventh root, eighth root. Those are all radicals. So we've seen those before, right? Okay. So today we're talking about radicals. And rational exponents. Rational just means you can write the number as a fraction. So we're going to see fractions in our exponents today. Y'all love fractions. So let's get going. <clears throat> this is a lot of words, a lot of writing. You don't necessarily have to write this all down. Just make sure you're paying attention as I talk through it. Because there's a lot of information here. Okay? So we said we've talked about square roots before, correct? What does a square root tell me to do? If I give you the square root of 25, what's the square root of 25? Five. 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 How'd you get that? It's five times anything times itself. Very good. You're looking for the number times itself that gives you this number, right? So essentially you're asking yourself what number squared gives me that number under the radical, right? Everyone agree with that? So what number times itself gives me 36? Six. Six. We can extend this concept of our square roots to other types of roots. For example, 2 is a cube root of 8 because 2 cubed equals 8. So if I ask you to find the cube root, oops, cube root of 8, I'm no longer asking what number times itself gives you that number, but I'm asking you what number times itself times itself again gives you that number. So what number cubed gives you 8? 2. two. Does that make sense? Same thing with fourth root. I'm asking what number to the fourth power gives you 81? What number times itself times itself times itself gives you 81? Three. Not nine. Three. Three times three times three times three gives you 81. And that's what this is saying right here. And three is the fourth root of 81 because three to the fourth root equals 81. Do we all understand that? Okay. Okay. I'm not, I'm still talking through it. Uh, in general, for an integer n greater than 1, if b to the n power equals a, then b is an nth root of a. That's what we would say. An nth root of a is written like this. I would have that written down. And we say it as the nth root of a. Everyone say the nth root of a. The nth root of a, yep. Where the expression... The nth root of a is called a radical. This whole thing's a radical. And n is the index of the radical. So this little number in the nook of our radical is called the index of the radical. Okay? So for our cube root right here, what's the index? Three. For the fourth root, what's the index? Fifth root, what would the index be? Sixth root. Six would be the index. Twelfth root. 12 would be the, in, the index. Okay? Everyone got that? There's no number here, is there, on our square root of 36 and our square root of 25? Since this is a square root, what number do you think is implied to be there? 2. Everyone got that? So if there's no number in the index, it's understood to be 2. Everyone got that? A little extra information for you. The number under the radical is called the radicand. So you might hear me say that word a few times today. Radicand, the number under the radical. Uh, we can also write an nth root of a as a power of a. If you assume the power of a, or the power of a power property applies to rational exponents, then the following is true. If I have a to the one half, and I raise it to the second power, I'm multiplying those exponents, correct? What's one half times two? 
1, so I get a to the first, or just a. If I have a to the 1 third raised to the third, it becomes a. a to the 1 fourth to the fourth becomes a. Okay? So I can raise it to its denominator, and it will pretty much just cancel out that exponent. Does that make sense? Uh, because a to the 1 half is a number whose square is a, if I square a to the 1 half, I get a, right? I can write the square root of a equals a to the 1 half. Similarly, cube root of a is a to the 1 third, and the fourth root of a is a to the 1 fourth. So what do you think the fifth root of a would, could I, I could also rewrite it as? a to the 1 fifth. What about the sixth root of a? a to the 1 sixth, seventh root of a. A to the one seventh, the hundredth root, hundredth root of A. A to the one over one hundred power, right? So in general, you need to write this down. The nth root of A equals A to the one over n power. For any integer n that's greater than one. So if I have a radical, I can rewrite it using a rational exponent, a fraction. I just put one over my index to make it a rational exponent. So like we said, a to the twelfth, or the twelfth root of a would be a to the one twelfth. Yeah? What if it's not over one? Say it again? What if it's not over one? What if the integer's not over one? What do you mean? Yeah. So you're saying if n is not greater than one? Yeah. You're not going to see an index that's not greater than one. Are there any questions about that? I can rewrite a radical using a rational exponent. Okay with that? Just put 1 over the index. We good. Can I move on? I would write this chart down. We have different numbers of solutions depending on what our index is and what our a value is, our radicand. So let n be an integer greater than 1. And let a be a real number. So n is my index, a is my radicand. I'm talking about the nth root of a. So if n is odd, my index is odd. Anytime you have an odd index, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, so on and so forth, I'm only going to have one real nth root. It's going to be the nth root of a equals a to the 1 over n. Okay. Now, if your index is even, we got three options here, depending on what our radicand is. So if my index is even, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, so on and so forth, and my a value is greater than 0, what numbers are greater than 0? What types of numbers? Positive numbers, right? So if my a value is positive and not 0, and my index is even, then A has two real nth roots. Plus or minus the nth root of A equals plus or minus A to the 1 over n power. Second option for an even index. My index is even. My A value is 0. I'm only going to have one real nth root. What do you think the nth root of 0 is? One number times itself gives you zero. 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 Right? I don't got that. So I have one real nth root. It would just be zero. And then the third option, final option for index being even, is if my a value is less than zero. What numbers are less than zero? Negative, negative numbers. So if my index is even, radicand is negative, then a has no real nth roots. I would say no real nth roots. So let's say I have the square root of negative 36. Is there a number in this little nook? Is there a number there? Yeah. Well, that I can see? No. So what's it understood to be? Two. So is that index even or odd? 2. 2 is even. Is my radicand greater than, equal to, or less than 0? 
less than. It's negative 36, right? Mm -hmm. That's less than zero. So how many real nth roots do I have? None. So I'd put no real nth roots. I want you to write it out just like this. Okay? Let's see why that's the case. Remember, for a square root, I'm looking for a number times itself to give me that number under the radical. Can anyone think of a number that when I multiply it by itself, it might give me negative 36? Some people say 6. Well, what's 6 times 6? 36. Positive 36, right? Not negative 36. Some people are like, oh, it's got to be negative 6 then. What's negative 6 times negative 6? Positive 36. Anytime I have an even root, square root, fourth root, sixth root, eighth root, it's going to be multiplying a positive or a negative an even amount of times, which will always give you a positive number. So none of those are going to have any real root, real nth roots if I have a negative radicand. Does that make sense? No number, when I multiply it by itself, would give me negative 36. You're always going to get a positive. Does that make sense? Now, when you get to algebra 2, you can take the square root of this. You're getting into the set of imaginary numbers, though. We're not going to talk about that in algebra 1. We'll talk about that in algebra 2. So for now, in algebra 1, we cannot take the square root of a negative, or any even root of a negative. Does that make sense? Questions about that? Can I move on to our next example? No. Okay, I'm waiting a second. Okay, moving on. I can come back to this later if I need to. Find the indicated real nth roots of A. So this is the formula we're using here. And it gives me an n value and it gives me an a value. So on letter A, what's my index going to be? What is n? 3. So I'm finding the cube root. And what's my a value, my radicand? Negative 27. Finding the cube root of negative 27. So let's go see how many real nth roots we're going to have first. That's what I need to do first. My index is what again? 3. Is that even or odd? Even. Odd. Does everyone know what I mean when I say even or odd? Yeah. We all know what even and odd numbers are. Okay. Because I've heard multiple people kind of give me the wrong answer on this. 3 is odd, right? How many real nth roots am I going to have? Based on my chart. If n is odd. One real nth root. Now I know how many nth roots I'm going to have, so let's go find that one real nth root. So I'm looking for a number times itself times itself that gives me negative 27. So what number to the third power would give me negative 27? Hmm? What number to the third power would give me negative 27? Three? Well, let's try it out. What's three times three? Nine. What's nine times three? Positive 27. It's a negative number. So if it's not positive, three is probably going to be negative three. What's negative three times negative three? Positive nine. What's positive nine times negative three? Negative 27. So negative three is it. Questions there on letter A. Like I said, find how many solutions you're going to have, or real nth roots, and then find those real nth roots. Okay? How would I write B to start off with? If we wrote it like this on letter A. If N equals 4 and A equals 16. Huh? How would we read that off, though? We'd say the fourth root of 16. Everyone got that? Fourth root of 16. Say that with me. Fourth root of 16. Fourth root of 16. Fourth root of 16. Very good. So now I'm asking myself what number times itself times itself times itself gives me 16. What number to the fourth power gives me 16? It is 2. Is there any others? 
What did we forget to do before we did this? See how many solutions we have, right? My index is what? Four. Is that even or odd? Even. Is my A value greater than, less than, or equal to zero? Greater than. So if my index is even and my A value is greater than zero, how many real nth roots am I going to have? Two. So I found one of them. Two times two is four. Four times two is? Two times two is four. Four times two is? Eight. Eight times two is? Sixteen. So two does work. What other number, when I raise it to the fourth power, gives me sixteen? Yeah, negative two. What's negative two times negative two? Positive four. Four times negative two. Negative eight. Negative eight times negative two. Positive sixteen. So I can write that as plus or minus two. And that accounts for my positive two as well as my negative two. Everyone got that? So make sure you see how many real nth roots you're going to have first. And then... Find those in groups. Questions on example one, A or B? Can I move on? Just a little statement here. Recall that the radical square root of A indicates the positive square root of A. Similarly, an nth root of A, the nth root of A with an even index, indicates the positive nth root of A. So some more examples. They're already written out for us like they need to be. But I'm doing essentially the same thing I did on the previous slide. So letter A, cube root of negative 8. What's my index here? 3. Is that even or odd? Odd. How many real nth roots am I going to have if it's an odd index? One real nth root. Does everyone see how we're using that chart? Okay. So now I'm asking myself what number times itself times itself gives me negative 8. Can anyone tell me what it is? Negative 2. What's negative 2 times negative 2? Positive 4. What's 4 times negative 2? Negative 8. So negative 2 it is. There's my one real nth root. Questions on letter A? Letter B. I've got a negative sign out front of my cube root, but I have the negative cube root of 8. So I'm not going to worry about my negative sign for right now. I'm just going to do the cube root of 8. Okay? So, what's my index here? Yeah? Okay. Right. It's 3. Is that even or odd? Odd. So how many real nth roots am I going to have? 1. What number to the third power gives me 8? 2. Now we have this negative out here. This is like negative 1 times my cube root of 8. So what did we say the cube root of 8 was? So I get negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2. There would be my answer for this problem. Any questions there? So I took the cube root, and then I handled the negative that's outside the radical. Questions here? Golly, we're crushing it, aren't we? Okay, 16 to the 1 fourth power. How could I rewrite this with a radical? No, not square root it. Hmm? I think I know what you're trying to say, but it's not quite how we say it. Not 16 to the 4th power. I'm looking at this slide right here, specifically down here. If I have something raised to the 1 4th power, I can rewrite it as what? How would we read that off? The what root? Now, int, I know what number it is. 4th root. 4th root of what here? 16, there we go. I want to see how we got that. And now I can evaluate it. <clears throat> I'm asking myself what number to the fourth power 
Gives me 16. We forgot again. What's my index? It's 4, so it's an even number. Is my A value greater than, equal to, or less than 0? Greater than. So how many real nth roots am I going to have here? 2. So we said one of them was what? Positive 2. What's the other one going to be? Negative, Negative 2. So plus or minus 2. Questions there? We follow them. We understand them. Do we have any questions so far? Okay, last one on this slide. Based on letter C, how can I rewrite negative 16 to the 1 fourth power as a radical? How would I read it off? Huh? Yeah, how would I read that off? I think you're saying that. There it is. Fourth root of negative 16. Let's don't forget our chart here. What's my index? Four. Is that even or ah? Even. Is my A value? Well, first off, what is my A value? Negative 16. Is that greater than, equal to, or less than zero? Less than. How many real nth roots am I going to have? Zero. So I'd say no real int roots. And I want you to write it out just like that. No real nth roots. There's no number that when I multiply it by itself, by itself, and by itself again, that would give me negative 16. Each time I raise something to the fourth power, I'm going to get a positive number. Okay? Questions on letter D? We good? I'd write this down as well. On all the previous slides, we've had 1 over a number as our exponent, correct? But what if we have some other number over another number besides 1? So let a to the 1 nth be an nth root of a, and let m be a positive integer. So here I've got a to the m over n, so it's going to be some number other than 1 over our index. I can rewrite it like this second step, or this first step right here. Because if I were to multiply 1 over n times m, I would get m over n, right? So this is equivalent to this. And then how can I rewrite a to the 1 over n? As the nth root of a, right? So this would be the nth root of a raised to the m power. So here's an example with numbers in here. I've got 27 to the 2 thirds power. I can take that denominator and put 1 over it. My numerator would then become the exponent that it's all raised to. So I get 27 to the 1 third all raised to the second power. 27 to the 1 third becomes cube root of 27, and that's all raised to the second power. And then I could evaluate it from there. Okay? Are there any questions how I'm rewriting this? Yeah. Yeah. So your numerator is going to go on the outside of the parentheses. The denominator will just be put under one. That way we can rewrite it as a radical inside the parentheses. Does that make sense? Okay. We ready to see some examples like this? No. Okay, I'm waiting. Once you get the hang of this, and you're given this right here, once you start to kind of recognize what it's going to look like, I'm okay if you skip that first step and jump straight to here. 27 to the 2 thirds. Oh, I know I got to take the cube root of 27 and raise it all to the second power. Okay? Okay, moving on. Last examples for the day. Evaluate letter A, 16 to the 3 fourths power. 
So let's break it down just like they did on this slide right here. 516 to the 3 fourths power. I'd write 16 to the what power inside parentheses? 1 over what? What's my denominator? 1 over 4. And then all of that would be raised to what power? What's my numerator? 3, the third power. Everyone agree with that? Questions on what I've done so far? Now from here, how can I rewrite 16 to the 1 fourth power as a radical? Do what? Fourth. Fourth starts with an R. Fourth root of 16, and it's all still raised to the third power. Now I can evaluate the fourth root of 16. So what number to the fourth power gives me 16? Two. Two. And then now I can evaluate two to the third. What is two times two times two? Eight. Eight. And there would be my answer. Okay? If you type this in your calculator, it will pop out eight for you. Do you think I want you to do that? No. I want to see these steps so you can show me you know what's going on in the background whenever this does get typed in the calculator. I want to see your steps. Okay? Don't just type this in and jump straight to eight. Everyone got me. Don't do that. Now, like I said, once you start getting the hang of it, I'm okay if you skip this first step and jump straight to the 4 through to 16 over 3. But if you need that first step <clears throat> for a little while, I'm okay if you write it down. But we should all hopefully eventually get to the point where we say, oh, I know that's going to be the fourth root of 16, all raised to the third power. Okay, did you have a question? Uh, is parent-teacher's meetings mandatory? Are there any questions about letter A here? Gatlin, do you have a question? Or are you? Okay, perfect. Can I erase and move to B? Huh? Letter B. We just did letter A. We got letter B, though. Hmm? You are exactly right. Golly, look at me forgetting again. Let me write it out again real quick. I apologize for that. Thank you for reminding me. So, so glad you reminded me. Our index is even. A value is greater than zero. So how many real nth roots would I have of the 4 through to 16? Two. What are they? What are the two real nth roots of the 4 through to 16? Positive and negative two. Positive 2 to the third power was what? Positive 8. Negative 2 to the third power would be negative 8. So my answer would be plus or minus 8. Don't forget about that chart like I keep doing. Now can I erase A and move to B? Better be. 27 to the four thirds power. We're going to do that first step while we're in the notes. What am I, what am I going to write in parentheses? 27. 27 to the what power? Third. Not third power. Oh. Huh? Third. Not four thirds. I'm trying to break that down like we did here. So 27 to the what power? No. One third. There we go. One third power. In parentheses, remember we take that denominator, put it under 1, and then all that gets raised to the what power? Fourth, Fourth power. Everyone got that? Okay. I can rewrite 27 to the 1 third power as what? How would we say it? Fourth. Not the fourth root. Third root of 27. That's all still raised to the fourth. 
Okay, let's use our chart here. What's my index? Three. Three is that even or odd? Odd. Odd. How many real nth roots am I going to have? One. Just one, okay. What is the third root of 27? What number times itself times itself gives me 27? Three. And now I can evaluate 3 to the 4th. What is 3 to the 4th? 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 81. Cool. Do I want you to just type this in your calculator and get the answer? Yes. No. <laughs> you do that, you're wrong. I want to see your steps. You're right, but without steps. I want to see your steps. Once again, you can skip that first step if you're getting the hang of it, if you're recognizing that you need to do the cube root of 27 raised to the 4th power. Okay? Questions there? Questions on example three? Here we go. There you go. Page 289, numbers 2 through 34 evens. Are there any questions that would pertain to my recording before I end it?